The brain is an energy hog. It has a tremendous demand for nutrients, and it primarily relies on only two, glucose and ketones. Glucose requires an insulin-dependent mechanism to get in, in certain parts of the brain, including in the hypothalamus and some of these other regions of cognition and memory and learning. And so where you have glucose attempting to come into the brain to nourish it, because remember the brain has a high energy need, insulin has to come and knock on those doors. In a case of insulin resistance, one, not only can the brain not get the glucose very well because the insulin isn't working on knocking the doors open very well. So it's not getting its glucose. The tragedy is insulin stops the production of ketones. And so the brain, it's starving in the midst of plenty, being surrounded by glucose. It can't use crying out for ketones that the body is not making because the insulin is too high to allow it to do so. The man out of a university called Sherbrooke University in Eastern Canada oh, yeah. named Stephen Kunain published a paper looking at young, healthy women Women in their 20s, women do suffer from Alzheimer's disease more than men, and so that makes it very relevant. But in these women who had polycystic ovary syndrome, which is insulin resistance, Dr. Kunain found that in these young women with PCOS, their brain glucose uptake was significantly diminished. And then Dr. Kunain and others, more and more groups now are showing this, my lab included, that when you do give the brain ketones, not only does it use the ketones very readily, indeed, if the brain has a preference for any fuel, it is ketones far more than glucose. However, a person can raise their ketones, the brain starts using those ketones immediately. 